one. I think it's about to. Yes. Hello. <laughs> it's about to. Yes. <laughs> Hello and happy Friday. Oh, I'd already said we're having trouble streaming for you. So we might have to upload it. Okay. There's our first technical error. Do you see it on your end? I have no technical error, right? On okay. Mine, but it's live. Well, let me mute this. How is everybody? Happy Friday. I am super stoked and excited because, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Leanne Curtis. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> doing so very well. New York City in the house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I was trying to pinpoint. It was about 10 years ago we met, right? Exactly. I, think, I think I had my kids, right? Mm -hmm. No, you had a little toddler, and she was such a bright light, and I was obsessed with her. She came to visit you on the set. That was it. So this has to be 12 years ago. Yeah. You were crafty. And mm -hmm. I remember what good food you had. And I was like, wow, this is real food. What is this about? <laughs> Who is this creature? And look at her little mini. Wow. <laughs> I was blown away by your vibe like back then. But I didn't, I don't know that I would have described it that because now everything is vibration and energy for me to a point where like my friends are just so sick of me right now. I hear that. I, I understand that completely. And that's the thing. I think we knew each other's light. We saw each other's light. We were like, okay, I can handle conversations with you. <laughs> and, then, and we had great conversations and then we found social media and here we go. Well, and yeah. We kept following. And I met your daughter. Miss Jax was there. Another very bright light. Very bright light. I'm making sure we're live on here because yesterday I got duped. She's what such a bright light and she's... um. She's doing her thing. She's climbing the charts. She's making music and videos. And she wants to do. And yeah. she's being happy, which is, you know, I've learned. She, she, oh, it's like we all know this. We're all born so very coherent. And then the programming starts. Um, you know, whatever we didn't pick up uh, through the ethers, through the circulation, through the DNA, through the space in which we grow for nine months, you know, like we, we carry that. And then, you know, the pressure from society starts. Um, and it's very few who don't succumb. Like I was pretty strong when I was young. Yeah. Or like I've told this story so many times. I told my mom not to buy crest because the little girl on the TV said it gives you one cavity. Well, I'd gone to the dentist a few times at three and a half. Three, yeah, you got, went, what? You went I've, one time? I've been to the dentist a few times at three and a half. I didn't Aww. have cavities. Yeah. So if they're telling me if Madison Avenue says Crest only gives you one cavity, I'm hearing Crest. I don't hear only. I hear Crest gives you one cavity. Mm-hmm. Don't buy Program. that. Why, why are you buying that? Mom, don't yeah. buy Crest. It, they said it gives you one cavity. She laughed at me. Oh, she did? Well, but see, my mom, like, programmed without knowing she's programmed. Right. She yeah. started to wake up so that she could leave not so. And she was industry, too, right? Yeah, she was industry. She was, I think her heart was mostly into music and composing, um, but she had to make money. So she translated this. I knew her as somebody who translated films for people like Ingmar Bergman, um, Lena Wertmuller. So I grew up with people like Sophia Loren, Lee Volman. Like that was normal to me. Like, okay. And I went to Le Lycée Francais and she started with the academia because that's where she did well. Well, here's Leanne showing up probably a star seed, like that wasn't a word back then, 1965. I'm pushing my stroller going, hi, hi, hi. Like, and my grandma, oh, one day I'm going to get abducted. She says, hello to everyone, Paulette. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, uptight, scared French woman. Oh no. A nanny who follows directions. And then there's my mom who's just like, ugh the great unwashed and the masses and stupid and oh, don't speak with the help. And like, so I was just wanting to talk to everybody and be friendly with everybody. Cause that's my heart. Yeah. And then I have these like scared women raising me. Like my dad croaked when I was five. So I was surrounded by yeah. frightened women. <laughs> wow. Right. Frightened women, academia, trauma at school, 
Like it was weird. It was like looking back now, I feel like it was weird, but it's everything that I needed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, cause wherever yeah. you go, there you are. And that's like the most comforting thing. Even if I find myself, can I curse? Yeah. In a yeah. shit storm. Like <laughs> I, I'm still happy. People don't understand that. Like yeah. I used to have conversations where, um, like people would call and tell me what's wrong, you know, and then I listened to Joe Dispenza and like on one of the things he said, just sort of out yeah. of mind, like, you know, when people start doing that, I ask them to tell me what's right. Like, and, and um, I, I like, I guess I'm not as graceful as Joe Dispenza yet because I was in a conversation with somebody who kept saying like how, I don't know, they were asking me what I did and how I could possibly make it through and um, I don't know. It's just weird. It was, it was, it was weird. Mm -hmm. And then it, it got to the point where everything I was saying they claimed was making them feel bad about themselves where I was like, okay, you can't use me and my words. You're taking those words and you're using them against yeah. yourself. Why yeah. are you blaming me for just speaking my truth? Yeah. And then I was accused of being elevated like in an angry voice, like it's the first time that's ever happened to me. And it's somebody who knows better and knows they know better and was like angry at me because I don't know, because I don't do that to myself. And it wasn't a two way dump fest. It was like, this is wrong and that's wrong. And I don't know, like I, I, I wasn't able to turn the conversation around and ask them to tell me what was right. So I feel like, um, I won't say I failed, but I had an experience that I could improve on, like on my end, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. You, um, not to pivot too much, but you said when you, school, you went to Steiner schools, right? You I were did, right kid. after the Lycée Francais traumatized me. I was thrown yeah. into the Rudolph Steiner school um, and got put back from fourth grade because I was like my mom. My mom graduated high school when she was 15, so I'm okay. smart. I am smart. Mm -hmm. I do have smarts but they're not like academic intellectual like to sit down and read nietzsche give me a gun i'd rather shoot myself I'm not doing that <laughs> not doing by the that. way i apologize i keep doing this i noticed we had a lock on again it, it happened to us yesterday on raising star seeds so it wasn't live like public so i'm trying to make it public and i'm putting it on your page now so no. <laughs> um i just technical things you know so that's why i'm looking down i didn't so, even notice because i talked okay to well, it won't allow me post on your timeline, it says. So I'm just going to tag you. Um, <laughs> All right. And, and uh, so forgive me for looking down, but I'm hearing you. Well, now I'm looking down, too, to see if, like, I can figure out <laughs> what. Man, I'm going to tag you, and then it should go on yours. Oh, yes, no. Ali G would say technology is <laughs> stupid. It is. <laughs> So did you find solace in Steiner when you went? I know on Star Seeds, we're probably going to chat um, Star Seeds. I, in my adult life, looking back to what Steiner was, mm -hmm. in retrospect, I find solace in what happened at Steiner in now. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. When I was at Steiner, it was like somebody pulled the rug out from under me. What do you mean I have to go and do third grade over and I'm joining in the middle of the year because there was some issue at uh, Le Lycée that was like super fucked mm -hmm. um, and I was dealing with my dad having croaked when I was five and a half so I think they moved me in, so I'm, I'm like an eight year old in fourth grade with kids who are just nasty mean like a lot of rich kids who are some of them diplomats children wow fun yeah um Wow. Yeah. And then I'm at Steiner where I'm not allowed to write like teeny tiny with a pen. Like, uh -huh. like tiny. No, no, there are no pens for you. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not allowed to write with a pen. No, we write in big block letters with crayons. I was like, you what? Really like what the going on here? Right. And then I'm not allowed to watch TV. I'm in an entertainment yeah. family. Good luck, Chuck. I know. Like, I so know. the whole time I was at Steiner, I think I was more trying to like not look at the teacher because she said I can look in your eyes and see if you saw TV last night. So like, oh my god, I was just like terrified because I'm raised by two fear mongering fear theories. Uh -huh. Like I don't know. And then my grandma's family, my this grandmother that was scared, like two generations, three generations back from her, they're beheading people and like 
I have a, a coat of arms that my mom wore. Like, de la Tour Girard. like these guys have a coat of arms. There was royalty. There's a De La Roche Foucault um, connection. And so now here I am, like fast forward. I'm watching Gaia Network. I'm watching Ancient Aliens. They're all talking about the elites and the bloodlines. And I'm going, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Were you starting to dot connect and like um? Yeah, <laughs> got parchments over there that go back into the 1500s, dude. Like, and this coat wow. of arms, and then like the guy I married is Chinese, partly, and then his family. How that goes back, and I'm going, wow. <clears throat> the last wow. regression I had was all about not all, but a lot about healing, healing the bloodline back and forth. Yeah. Like, and to get all over the place, like recently I had like a vision, I can't say that, but like a vision in my mind's eye, like I can see it right now, not with my eyes, but I can see it in front of me. It's like a pteroid, like a, a donut pteroid, like a donut peach, like it's a pteroid, it's all colors. And in the middle, that little hole, that funnel, that's me in the middle. And I'm healing up and down and out and around for future and be like, and this is what I'm doing in my ether space like all day long as i'm doing dishes like all of it it just never stops because it's all now like i'm really starting to feel that um did that intensify because i know the lockdown like 2020 you've been in new york right you were caring for your mom and you kind of were homebound for a while new york went so I was homebound by my own design before that i've always okay. been like i want to be in my girl cave do you want to go out yeah. no not really like so the pandemic was like, whatever for me, yeah. <laughs> I was like, and oh. then they were like, well, you have to do this or you can't play with the reindeer. I was like, I don't like them. They smell and they poop everywhere and they don't know that they're walking in their own poop. Why do I want to play with them? I don't. I did it with you before and I still don't. So bye. Like, <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't like people and I'm not very gregarious. I am. Right, right, right. I am. I'm still well, a girl who like now I don't push a stroller. Now I push a granny cart to and from Trader Joe's and I still say hi to everyone. I know. I just got back from Trader Joe's. <laughs> Makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, hi, Erin. Think the fake cinnamon smell. I don't like that. I know, and it's like they milk it through Halloween, through Christmas. It's a <laughs> constant. Cinnamon sticks in some water. Jack said, "Mom, put apple and orange." I'm like, I've got these apples that just kind of shriveled up, like you know, they had menopause and didn't take collagen. So I'm just gonna put them. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, they're like, yeah, but that's like crepey mm -hmm. skin and everything. So yeah. I put the crepey skin apples. I was like, you still, I love you and you're going to make me love you more. And the house smells like apples and cuties that are just like almost Yum. like, um, what are the cabbage patch kids? No. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I smell yeah. Like that you're making like quercetin. Quir uh, you're making like your own hydrochloroquine. <laughs> I, oh, am I? I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I just know that the house smells really good now because I've got this in like the simmering water on my electric uh, induction cooker. Yeah. Um, and I plugged it because those you can plug in anywhere. They're yeah. portable. So I plug yeah, it yeah. in the foyer and the whole house smells really good. And I'm dumping. Uh, oh, look at that old lady fat. I like that. Oh, um, <laughs> Well, that's why you take collagen is because this shit, right? No. It still um, looks fine to me. Yeah, I sit in front of the lights. So I'm like, I have the big window right here. Right. Blast my little lines. Yeah, let's see the view. Oh, you want to see the view? Yeah. Aaron Moriarty in the house. Aaron, check this out. Hi, Aaron. Ooh, ooh. New York, New York. What this a beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. You are up there. Thank you. And I'm elevated, but don't get mad at me. Like what? Your has a cat in the ether. Well, there's that too. <laughs> yes. See? Oh, yes. There you go. <laughs> but like, you know, there's the, the church downstairs. Yeah. Throw some paper airplanes, Aaron there's says. A subway. Oh, I used to throw uh, Devo albums. There was a Devo <laughs> album of mine across that. Like I was terrible when I was a teenager. <laughs> Yeah, you grew up there. Mm -hmm. She grew yeah. up in this house. Uh -huh. yeah, this room here, this room, many, been many strange Aww. things. We don't want to talk about those. Um, well, the house, do you feel your mom's <laughs> present? Yes, it's less in the house than it is like in life situations. Um, 
see, look at that. Now, if I can figure out how not to make this not drop, then I also have a nice window and good natural light to make me look all blown out. <laughs> we know those tricks. What wrinkles? <laughs> what wrinkles? <laughs> I got this new powder and I was walking into the set learning center and Huck's like, you're extra wrinkly today. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the powder just sat in. Yeah. I need my light. Subtle, dude. Subtle. Right? Like, and I don't even know. I was looking at myself and usually I don't put makeup on to do these things. But today I was like, you know, I put a little kabuki on there. We'll, we'll try the kabuki. That's so cute. I put the purple. That's why I was like, oh, you're, you're purple. See? Here you go. Yes. I'm very It's always been my favorite color. I love it. Um, yeah, definitely. If, if you can touch on, I know you had a sacred moment with your mom. You spent her last breath with her and... Her last yeah. years, you know. Yeah, well, I got here on February 7th, 2019. And she declined to the point in January of 2020 where the doctors were like, look, you don't want to put her on the, all right, that's right. All right, I'm not putting her on the, I'm taking her off the pharma because it's making her crazy. The carbidopa levodopa was making her nuts. So I took her off of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I started pumping her for CBD because she had Parkinson's. CBD, yeah. Yep. You know, we may have to move into a different world. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, like we're on. Yes, so we're my best angle. On the TV. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. That's my bad side. Don't show that. <laughs> Let's go into my mom's room. Here. It's quieter in here. I can I put purple for her too. Oh plants. Like. Oh, that's beautiful. So anyway. Aww. We'll sit on mom's bed. And we'll have mom in the background. We'll chat with your we'll mom. In the background. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, like right where I'm sitting right now, the last three nights, I would sort of um, go back and forth from laying here next to her, listening to her breath. Like it was like it started getting like heavier, not struggling, but you could hear her working harder to breathe. Um. And over the last 72 hours, her breath just get less like, and in the last, I don't know, 30, 25, 30 years, she always had like a little, <clears throat> oh, I must vocalize. I must vocalize. I've got phlegm. And then she would never vocalize. Mm -hmm. A little phlegm ball. And I was like, oh. So I'm really grateful. There were no rawls. There was that little, <laughs> that little friend of hers. Um, and there were never any struggling in breath. It just got increasingly from. And then toward the end, it was more like. Oh, like teeny tiny in breath, teeny. Tiny yeah. In breath. Yeah. And she was laying there. And I guess like, I don't know, it's partly the actress in me, but there really are no words. Like yeah. so kind of like this uh -huh. to the side and i see her eyes like okay first i was here and some things told me i needed to like get up and go hold her hand and wet her mouth or whatever uh -huh. so, and i sat there next to her right there on the bed uh -huh. um and it was kind of and then her eyes i could see like there was activity in her eyes and then it just was <sighs> She took this breath in, her eyes popped open like she saw something and then went. <sighs> oh, wow. And oh. then there was a little. <sighs> and that was it. It was so peaceful. Oh. I was terrified of what it would be like because um, I thought to myself, good God. I hope it's not like my dad. I wasn't there, but she was. Apparently he was in a hospital room sipping on his tea and his lungs filled up with water. So he started <gasps> like with the crazy, like breathing and the struggling. And I think he probably shit scared out of him. Oh, you know, and as much as my mom is a fear-based person, you know, the things that I was saying at the end, like, you know, because I knew she was afraid to be separated from me. So I kept telling her, like, even though your belief system didn't incorporate any kind of religion, I can tell you that we both come from the same energy. 
origin, like we come from the same stuff. So the idea that you've sold yourself that we can be separated is insane. Like, it's just not good. Like, there's no basis for it. Mm -hmm. There's more basis to truly believe and rest comfortably, mama, knowing that we are inextricably connected. And then I was saying things like, if you don't see the light, remember you are the light. Mm. Okay? You'll shine your own way. And if you feel or hear anything that's disturbing to you emotionally, go the other direction. Whatever that means to you, move away from that space. Just find the love. Find the love. Find, find. like, And that's just words. Like, you know, telling her that she's not ending. Like, the vehicle she's in is rotting from out from under her. Like it can't sustain. You are so bright and so strong that this weak body can't hold you anymore. The meat suit was failing. Right. Yeah. But you're yeah. not failing. You've right. got to really get that through you best you can, you know, to the point where over the past three years, She'd watch Eckhart Tolle, and I think we'd getting someplace. And then she goes, I wonder if he's friends with Adolf Hitler. And I'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, like, every time I thought, like, even I got her hearing aids for the last three weeks of her, four weeks of her life, she was able to fucking hear, you know, <laughs> advocating for an old person and navigating. That's a whole other. Show. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, basically, since 2019, that you've been. Her yeah. Right arm. yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I um, got rid of like I was able to get her finances in order. And when the doctor said, you know, let's I can't do anything more for her in January. By September, I had her on um, Medicare, never put her on Medicaid. I think that's a scam. But that's also another conversation. Mm. I had her on Medicare and her fixed income. So there's no five-year look back. There's none of this nonsense. I got her off of uh, pharma and out of the medical community completely and totally, basically. Awesome. I yanked her. Yanked yeah. her out of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She'd have died if I'd put her in an institution. For sure. You, um, so she probably had a longer end of the life because she was home, rested, off pharma with you, just... Yeah, no, it was let anybody in, like nobody in, nobody out. This pandemic, my mom kept looking at me going, I think we're immune. I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. And now looking back, she is probably right. Because I, I've, as far as I know, I've never had COVID. They never had it. And I've still never taken a test. And I've, I, I, I took one test once. And then somebody said, don't stick that up your nose because you don't know what it's leaving behind. I'm like, oh, yeah. fabulous. God only knows what I just stuck up my mom's nose because our neighbor, we've got a small vestibule. The elevator opens and there's a door two feet to your left. That's mine. And then two feet to your right. That's tiny space. That Oh, that's it. That's your little. Op oh, wow. That's the elevator opens and it's them and it's us. And I love oh, wow. that. They're great. But they live in California. So there's nobody here. It's basically oh, wow. A nice. There's nobody here. I have no common walls with anybody. Thank God. That's great. Yeah, not for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. God, all those birds, light language. Although this building, technically, it's one of the old pre-war buildings, pre-World pre War II buildings. And they used to call it the musicians building. A lot of musicians lived here because the walls are so freaking thick. You can't hear. Oh, them. cool. So That's good. cool. Is there a lot of spirit there? And have, have you ever in the building? Yeah, I think the building itself has like weird, weird karma. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of spirit in here. Mm -hmm. A lot of spirits in here. I think mm -hmm. uh, you can add another one. Um, I know. Have you seen any signs of her? Um, uh, more like that's what I was gonna say. I don't. I feel her in in the house because I I don't not feel her in the house. If that made any sense. Mm -hmm. She has um, such an imprint, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but I mean, her imprint is so deep in me that like it's hard to separate that, really. Um, she'll always be with me. Like it's like inextricable. I can't, I, I, no words, really. It's just it's like being part of the same bigger thing, um, just being like a tentacle off of the same body or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like that with a lot of people that aren't necessarily biologically related either. Some people that, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, God, I know you. That's so weird. Anyway, um, to my left brain, let's finish the sentence. Finish the thought. Um, <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> right. And then you look back and go, why didn't you finish the thought? Because that actually makes the point. 
Hey, welcome to Leanne's brain. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I love Leanne's brain, and Thank I love you. the light language. Uh -huh. Thank you. That's that's for me. That that's like a very um. It's like a. It's like some people take a shower in the morning. I my dream world like i know i'm going places and doing things so like it's it's i need to wash that and oh, when i'm it's like flipping from one dimension to another and like it's it's like a kind of a something i do like to just set a tone for myself mm -hmm. um vibrationally um and <laughs> And bring through whatever energies and sounds and movements. Like a lot of times when I'm doing my breathing, you can't see my toes. But my toes, when I do my breaths, yeah, always flex up and open. Like so. Really? But then somebody told me that there are chakras in your webbing in your toes. And I thought, oh, well, maybe that's why my body does that. Because like everything opens up when I'm doing the breathing. Like when we have more than seven chakras, those are the main ones. Right. Yeah. There's tons right and going all the way up yeah everywhere and your yeah. ideas from what i uh gather are in your field not in your head they're in your field and thought travels faster than light which is why our mouth can't keep up with it which is why i'm convinced and i always say when there is a global language it's not a language it's the it's the junk dna it's the suppressed sensory uh tubules that are going to start vibrating and then everybody's going to hear each other. Like when you know somebody is on the other end of the phone, like, Oh, I knew it was you. It's like, that happens to everybody. Oh my gosh. So much more lately too. Well, yeah. And even deeper and more than just the phone. It's like, yeah, I, yeah, know, yeah. I just know, like, don't yeah. just don't. Cause I, I know I hate reading someone's mind and then they're being yeah, doing something so totally opposite. And I'm like, bitch, I know what you just said to me. Well, <laughs> Yeah, or at least not the words, but I, I feel the feelings that went along with whatever thoughts you're having. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And that's been forever for you, right? You've been, yeah. How was that? Uh -huh. Everybody's like that. You walk into a room where a couple's arguing and they get quiet all of a sudden. and Or even if they were arguing and it's kind of quiet because they know whatever, you can feel that shit in a room. How do you not feel that? I know. Yeah. Some I don't because not. they're, they're so clouded. Their body's already clouded. They're full of toxicities and but I think you feel it and they don't recognize it for what it is because of the programming. I think actually, you know, and then Joe Dispenza's whole thing about your body is the same thing as your subconscious. Like, you, you know, it's like, you don't even need to listen to his formula or whatever, but like, if your mind is open enough to allow that idea in and you just think about that for a minute, you rethink all of like your physical ailments. That's good. it. Yes. I always think that thoughts become things that includes with how our body is in reality. Because they're getting electromagnetic messages that are going from the molecular or from wave, wave form thoughts or wave. And then they collapse into particle. Like our physical mm -hmm. bodies, from what I gather now, are just a, not just, that minimizes it. Are a, like we're such master creators that we create the body in which we are going to operate in third dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. I make this, it makes itself every day, but like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah, That's what, forever I was debilitated by it. I was taught and programmed that your outside matter more than your inside, and you know, the the vanity and the got to wear the clothes and the, the makeup and hide oh, yourself no, and pile no, it on. It's like, no, let the inner light shine. Pardon? Wait, I was laughing at myself today. I'm like, you're putting Kabuki on. What are you doing? You are so silly. <laughs> We're having fun. Yeah, that's. <laughs> but, you know, then I was having fun putting the Kabuki on. And then here's a good one. Here's my lesson. It's like, you know, why are you doing that? And then I was trying to like fuck with the eyeliner. I don't know if you can. Can you? I, ooh, I love it. Well, but no, you see. You see oh, the red. Know? Yeah, what, happened? What, what happened? happened? I was like a little too, and then the Q-tip decided to oh, no. kiss my eyeball. I was like, and then, then I thought, you know, this is this is the sign. That, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, you know, I just put a sweater on. over my jammies. I don't have my bra on or anything. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> bra except some societal yeah pit sling like I know. Pit slings i'm done Hi, i've heels. been blessed with little peaches i don't yeah <laughs> Yep, the heels, the everything, the works. And I was obsessed. I had eating disorders. I had total mental breakdowns. Right. I was supposed to be taken in for 30-day treatments for all these disorders I had. But I was never, it was like the inner light shines and it can change your exterior. It was I, irony as I moved to LA to get rid of all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> no, it's not. I feel like it's it's like me totally immersing myself in dysfunction so that I could really get a good handle on this dysfunctional stuff so that I come out the other end of it and really understand like what it's like not to be in that too. Yeah. Like my first statement to myself is I'm accountable for everything I experience. I said that out loud to a friend of mine in 2018 and there was this silence. And they said, wow, that's pretty deep. Like, uh, you know, no pun intended. They get it? Right. It, is deep. <laughs> it is deep. Like, but I didn't understand. Like, for me, it wasn't a deep statement. For me, it was like, uh, duh. Like, that, that's like so superficial. It's like, I'm accountable. Of course I am. Because how I see something will condition the experience, which means I'm in control of it. So nothing outside of me can fuck with me unless I'm already thinking what somebody's saying and use it against myself. Like I've really come to this point where like I can through a process, confuse myself with too many facts and then go do something mind numbing like dishes or whatever. And then really zero in like the hawk. Like I always know. I always know. When you saw that hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's it. Well, I love that we, we, when we met, you know, we met on set and then we're staying social, social media, but then all of a sudden all this, the awakening and all these and people taking their freedom back and we're following the same people and stuff. I'm like, oh, we're still in the same circles. We're still six degrees, the six degrees of Leanne Curtis. That's what I was saying. Right. Well, it turned into the three degrees of Heidi Pop rebooted. Like what? <laughs> you know, I lost, those are all my pages are for my multiple personalities. <laughs> That's good. Well, my mom, like, this is, I was trying to write her obituary and like her eulogy, like, you know, you know, Paulette Rubenstein, AKA list upon request. Like I can't, you can tell it like we're in the business because I'm a list upon request. She yeah. has so many last names. Yeah. Not what she was catch me if you can, but like, you know, she's yeah. Paulette Rubenstein. So when she's 18, she's Paulette Ravel. Then she gets married to some dude named Maynard. Then that was not good. And the director made her Paul Alban in France. And then she got rid of Maynard, went back to, uh, no, then she married uh, Matt Matthews. His last name was Swartz. Like, then it was Samoth. Then it was Curtis. Then like, I'm Rubenstein for all the dubbing. <laughs> And I'm, like, hey, Larry, I'm like, who am I writing about? Like, what the? F actually? Ask her to come through. So just channel through and tell me when to I'm write. Like, I'm exhausted. Like, <laughs> yeah. Did you know all this light versus dark and all that stuff when you were like, I know you, I know the claim to fame. You have a lot of claims to fame, but the 80s movies and stuff. Yeah. Were you already aware of that kind uh, of stuff? Intrinsically, yes. But at, at that point, I was already trying to be what I thought they wanted me to be so that I could get all the things that I thought that I wanted to. And I was trying to go about it all the wrong way. And, you know, it's hard when you're not centered to go into a career in the entertainment business. The thing that saved me was that I think that like, because it's literally in my DNA on both sides like I didn't understand anything else. I didn't understand nine to five other than it's something that I wanted to avoid, like the plague. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's not like, I'm just not the one, two, three, four, five girl. I'm right. Some people are lady who does mandalas and just doodles and create stuff. And like, you know, even when I breathe, I'm creating. What am I creating? I'm creating CO2. Like, I don't know. I'm creating something. Always I'm creating. We're creators. Like, Yeah, we are creator beings. Everybody's creator beings. Some just right. have that brain where they can sit in the cubicle and do data. And I'm like, I can't sit. <laughs> right. To the point where I do audiobooks too. Oh, wow. 
Oh, you mean you listen to them or you're making them? To them? Well, I'd like to make some too that mm -hmm. don't exist for other people who might want to listen to stuff. Like I listened to um, Exopolitics and yeah. there was a guy named Robert Stanley who was on um, a couple days ago. I think I put it on my Facebook um, mm -hmm. and I reached out to him and I was already in the PDF of The Shining Ones by uh, it Christian and his wife, something O'Brien, Ian. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he sent me an email with all of this stuff. And one of the things was this PDF. But like, if you want to buy a book, the cheapest one is 175 because it's out of print. And the ones that are like new and good can $400. Oh, wow. So like, well, phew, why? I've got a setup. Like, this is, this is the hard part. Sitting down and focusing for four hours and reading this into my microphone and then cutting out the and the clicks and the whatever and then getting it at the right decibels. But like theoretically, I could probably be sitting here all day with my not with my birds. <laughs> they don't like. Uh, yeah, you gotta find a spot for them. <laughs> yeah, I, but like I could make an ISO booth probably out of any one of these closets now. Yeah, yeah. And you know, totally, totally not a bad idea. I know so many things I can do in a rent stabilized apartment. Theoretically, we live a long time. So that's 40 years. I get to, I get to croak in this bed, in this room or whatever room I choose to, Aww. if I want to. That's so you that's were, were you born? For insulating me like wow. that. Like that's, that's I wasn't born here. No, we, I was born and we lived in a penthouse on 77th street across from the museum of natural uh, history where I oh, would wow. like to go not to see the things, but to jump up the stairs one by one and count. My <laughs> daughter did the same thing when I took her to Jocelyn Park. She wouldn't want to go play on the structure. She'd want to go up and down the stairs and count them, which to me is like proof that DNA. Yep. Like, she didn't learn that. Like you think at, at, at 36 years old, that's what I'm doing, going up and down stairs counting. Mm -hmm. that's, no. it. that's an imprint. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My mom's little imprint is the exterior, the vanity thing, the what's what's on the outside, but I digress. No, <laughs> but you're a New York girl. You ever yeah. spend out time here though? You didn't you live in LA a little bit? Or you always years. I was there for 30 years. I literally dropped my life like a hot potato to come back and take care of my mom. That's it. Yes, so you I left was there 30 years. I got there in, in 1987. Okay. And I left in 2019. Wow. So it was that whole chunk. Well, I mean, I know I met you here, but I didn't know if you were inbound for that. Wow. Look at you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like friends, friends that have stayed friends through this whole thing and like called me almost every day. There's one person in particular who lives in Detroit who has been so incredible um, support and mentoring. And I know way too much about Songwriters Guild contracts from the 1950s and how they work and how the music business works it's like i really have filled my head space with a lot of what turns out to be useful mm -hmm. knowledge for what mm -hmm. i think we want to do moving forward um but like mind numbing shit like but this guy is just amazing and he said to me you know it's not too many people who go back to ground zero to go fix themselves then i said to him that's really the outside reason is my mom needs help. I'm going to go back there and I don't know how long this is going to take or what I'm in for, but I can tell you she'll take her last breath in that apartment and she'll go out for the last time feet first. I'm not playing. Mm -hmm. And my husband was just like, okay, they mm -hmm. gave me a gift of you go ahead and do what you need to do. And just literally held the fort and went through so many crazy experiences, like all by himself with me just, watching not able to do anything oh. training like seriously i look back at that like you know somebody was really giving me the opportunity to go insane and let it break me or just hunker the fuck down and continue doing my joe dispenza no matter what my eyes were seeing i'm gonna stay happy i'm gonna stay high vibing i'm gonna peel that layer i'm gonna not be that person i'm gonna watch myself with neutrality and not use what I see myself doing as another reason to continue being that old who I was to beat myself. I can't It's like off the fucking merry-go-round means off the merry-go-round, not just even if you're solo doing it. Yeah. So done with this. Like the mm -hmm. ultimate sick and tired of being sick and tired. Like, and, and it just, it's, it's, I would literally, 
have to kill myself. And I'm talking about my ego self. If, if I were to revert to any kind of old behavior um, for a long period of time, when I do, I've noticed that it's dwindled to small periods of time. Like I can get really pissed and then go, what are you doing? You doing it again. And then laugh yeah. the fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Everything's funny now. Every laughter's the best. Everything yeah. is funny. Like laugh, yeah. Look at me. I'm like, yeah, my mom died. <laughs> and they're like, what? I'm Aww. like, yeah. How, how, how goes the grieving? Somebody said. It's like, uh, it went. That doesn't mean that like I don't come in here and clean up and whatever and then just sit and go mama and cry for a minute. Yeah. You know, I have those moments. You also had to grieve for like three years, like sitting by your bedside. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Like sometimes you get the grieving out on the front end because yeah. watching somebody go from vibrant to now I have to move in with her to like what my eldest child described as mom it's like you're keeping a corpse alive right now she's so like i can't come up and she, my eldest child mm -hmm. literally could not physically tolerate coming up here and seeing their grandmother like that that's difficult yeah so yeah, i don't begrudge not getting any help like i literally did this yeah. all by myself like and yeah. i'm not saying that to martyr myself and then you know friends are like well wait you had hospice it's like yes but you're not understanding i had boxes delivered to my front door I had somebody come in because they had to take her vitals and then sit and, you know, chat with me. Cause what are you going to do? I'm not giving her the meds. I'm not going to stop her hallucinations. Give her the parahelt. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing anything you're telling me to do. So stop trying to guide me. Cause I'm not going to listen. Mm -hmm. Cause ultimately that shit's just going to fucking kill her. So no, she can have her hallucinations. She's not upset. Like if she did get upset, I would give her like a, one quarter of a 0.5 Ativan. She called that the mood changer. The mood changer. Right. She would very rarely need that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the only time a doctor would come in is to ask questions to check off boxes. Like, is she this? Is she that? Is she this? That's well, it. She crying fast enough was basically the message. I was like, well, just because she's deteriorating mentally and not physically, and just because there are no boxes to check for that, doesn't mean she's not deteriorating. You're working for a fucking app. You're not even working for, you're reporting back to some fucking computer program. I'm right. not letting AI dictate what is deteriorating or not. So just know if you try to kick her off, I'm going to appeal it. Because she's deteriorating. Fuck That's me. what they were doing? They were just checking her via, just like, to I them, it's just a money source. No. Huh? I was, I was. Um, like they offered me 20 hours of aid. Like, and when they came over here, it's not like they helped me roll her or change her. I did all of that by myself, three meals a day by myself, brushing her teeth by myself, washing her by myself. I did not have an aid. I did. It was you and me against the world. So when people hear me say I have hospice care and then respond like by saying, Oh, you said you were all alone. It's like I was just because I had somebody checking boxes doesn't mean right I guidance. I had company. I had nothing. I chose that. It was better that way. Yeah. It's interference because they don't think like I do. When, when, when she was hallucinating, do you think, and it wasn't, you said scary. Do you think she was just in another dimension? Did, were there any cool? Yeah, there were lots of cool things. Um, mm -hmm. Like at first, toward the beginning, <laughs> um, it would be auditory hallucinations. She would hear a tenor and she would always ask, do you hear the tenors? Do you hear the music? Oh. And then I kept, you know, making jokes because, you know, that's who I am. I said, Mom, is, is, does he have a wobble? No, he's got a beautiful voice. I said, is he on pitch? And she said, yes, he's never, he's never off. He's never sharp. He's never flat. I was like, be grateful that your hallucination doesn't have a shitty voice and knows how to sing. <laughs> no, I can't hear it. <laughs> oh so, God bless I, her. I, here, perfect timing here. And yeah, everything. No, but I was a bitch, but I was funny. funny. Like I was bitchy, but she'd say, oh, you're so funny. It's like, you know, because she was also like my eldest was here for a couple of days because they were very raw, you know, <clears throat> and um, we sat on the couch, you know, and it was one of those It might as well have been out of a movie. We're talking and I 
said how grateful I was for grandma, like that she gave me music and that she insulated me and I get to succeed the lease in this apartment, which means they can't kick me out, which means like the illusion of security. <laughs> um, and I think that's funny too. It's like here, I think that, you know, that's illusory too. Like it's all anyway. So <laughs> I'm saying all these nice things about grandma and really like whatever. And then there's this silence and my kid goes, <sighs> but she could be such a fucking bitch <laughs> and we both just lost it because oh. yeah like hi oh. how are you doing she was beautiful yeah. but, oh my god such a bitch not violent if she wanted to reduce somebody she could reduce them to dust with a sentence oh man that's the gnarliest yeah wow yeah yeah. Aww. You taught me, you know, apathy is the opposite of love, not anger. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I knew, I knew, and I would tell my kids, like, when I knew I was being super dysfunctional and, like, just so, like, overwhelmed that all I could do was scream and yell because I didn't know how else to release, like, the energy. And mm -hmm. I didn't what else to do which in this society is like verbally abusive you're yelling you're like yeah i don't know what else to do i can't stay in here because i'll get dead sick die no um but like I, I i i i kept telling them you know if 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 my fury is giving you some kind of whatever like it's the apathy I, that's how much i love you like as sicko as this sounds like I can only get enraged with you to the same level as I love you. It's mm -hmm. you don't want. I don't care. Do whatever you want. That's so true. That's so like absent hearted. Yeah. Right. Absent hearted is a good way of saying apathetic. I like that. Mm -hmm. Absent hearted. That's a new one. I've been mm -hmm. trying to stay away from the word understanding too, because standing under what? Somebody said that a long time ago, Christine Hansen. She goes by Stone Hobbit on social media. But Stone said that. Like, what are you standing under? He's from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That it's makes sense. Who are some, who are some other favorites you watch and stuff? And you do. Where, where have you been getting a lot of... I know you get it from yourself and your light language, your downloads. Well, I can only attract um, things that I already know that I need to remember. So where, okay. where I go to remember is now a new thing that I'm saying. I love um, that. That's really cool. Where I go to remember, uh, a lot is portal to ascension.org. A guy uh -huh. named Neil. Neil. I'm, yeah, I know Neil. I love Neil. Yeah. I love Neil. I love Neil. I love his research and explanation of our galactic history. He's one of my favorite. Like, if, if he could tell me, if he were my daddy, I would tell him to tell me the story of our galactic history every night going to sleep. That's what I would Oh, love. cool. Good to know. I would love Neil. He'd probably be such a good dad. He would be, but you know, he's a good daddy to all of the, and I'm sure that's not the role he really sees him at, but he's a good shepherd of information that is very helpful to people who are trying to remember, um, remember who they are. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it crosses a wide array, everything from super technical stuff with Adam Apollo and the Steam Harriman, um, uh, JJ Janover, um, Dan, <laughs> Dan Willis is also good, not so technical. He's more exopolitics. Daniel, Daniel Winter, Daniel Winter, terrified. Oh my God, Dan, like it's, it's my brain wants to explode. Makes me feel like I'm back at Le Lycée Francais. I can't. Too, too, Someone. too, too left brain. But like my solar plexus understands the gist. Like that's all I can tell you is I understand what he's saying and I feel like it's right. But you know, in this society, that's not worth shit. So I just shut up. Mm. Mm. Those, those, those are worth lots. And in my it? mind, it's worth lots. So my self-worth is like what I. <laughs> that's everything. That's I, all I, there is. As much as I say those things, it's not like I use them as a gauge of worth. Like mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. use it as a observation of how perverted the truth has gotten out there. And how insane, like mass psychosis works. Like it's hundred monkey syndrome, but they're 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 taking what the psychotic monkeys are doing. 
Yeah. Not doing it. Not doing they're not taking the dirt off their potatoes. They're poisoning their potatoes and making them little potato robots. Yeah. Oh, and it's isn't this the year of Soylent Green? Soylent Green was based in 2022. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> but a lot of us are waking up to that. Do you think there's enough of us awakening they're like to our own divine divine badass selves that that could flip everything in this lifetime? What are your thoughts? I mm -hmm. feel like there's so much conjecture out there and there are so many people thinking what they're thinking and saying what they're saying. Like I can put breadcrumbs together and find a cohesive narrative um, that makes sense to me. Um, the idea that others have been able to get to that point. I think they're like, it's in development, like to use a very industry term, you know, there are different levels of development and they're people I think are slowly starting to wake up. I'm always very surprised when I call Amazon to, figure some customer service thing out. Like in the reps I get at Apple, Amazon, Con Ed, even the bank, like my banker is from Peru. Huh. Right? Like it just, people are aware. Civilians, the great unwashed that my mom used to do. The great unwashed. That's great so unwashed. You know what? They're not They're as not unwashed as you'd think. They may mm -hmm. be unwashed intellectually because they don't speak proper English, but really, what does that have to do with your heart? Mm -hmm. It's all about the heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. We got to be mindful entertainers with that. <laughs> right. That's what I said to my friend. It's like, I wish somebody would let me MC one of these panels like that they do. Yeah. Like, things because like I would just say the most inappropriate, funny things and get away with it. But that's needed for those things. They I know there were a lack of them. Like I was happy to come in and do yoga for 10 minutes twice a day when he was doing his 11 day marathon. Oh, was that? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. Was that Watcher's Talk? That's Omar on Watcher's Talk. Okay. Yes. I thought that was it. And it was a marathon, but he's, he's still, it's still regularly on, but that was a oh, marathon. Yeah. And, and Rob Yox, his, his channel's like gone berserk -o cuckoo taken off. He's got like five, five five figures of uh, uh, subscribers. And I think because of that, he's starting to get guests and same with Omar, everything's starting to creep. Like, and I look, I don't really look at my light language. I didn't put it up so that like I could have followers. That's attractive. There's ego. Have an ego. <laughs> we can't have ego. it. <laughs> um, it looks great to me. No, I know what you mean. You had to put it up so it's safely yeah, somewhere. Watch shot before. Now isn't everybody completely intrigued? No, you don't get to know what that was. <laughs> Sorry. No, not really. We flow. <laughs> let it flow, let it flow. But you were saying your light language. You put that up because it's just like I've had two years of vlogs that just don't. It's not like I think my ego was like, oh, no, they're not seeing. Watch it. Right. I didn't, it's not yeah. like that. Like the. the yeah. what, prompted me putting it on YouTube was a woman in my RV class saying, oh, can I videotape you doing the light language and keep it for myself to watch it every day? And I was like, what are you fucking Gollum? That's not what we're doing. But I'll compromise. And you I'll stay in control of it. You put it up. In my head, what the fuck are you doing? I said, I'll put it up on YouTube. I'll do it every morning and I'll put it up on YouTube. Then you that have you can watch whatever you want, whenever you want, but you're not like keeping me in the closet and like, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good because then you're in control of it. Yeah. I look back and like, oh my God, I have two and a half years of vlogging and like a digital diary. Like I didn't care about the count. I was like, I can reference this. I get to go back. My kids are going to see this one day. Like I'm like, oh, I'm glad I started. If you don't get canceled like my friend Frank. I call him my friend. He's really not Your my friend. friend. Frank. Oh, you have a new subscriber. <laughs> I just friended you, Leanne. Okay. <laughs> Who's Frank now? Frank Jacob is a guy who talks on Inspired with this guy named Jean Nolan, who um, lives in Tennessee. And I guess he makes he makes his way creatively with his music and probably also with the fact that he does commercials for products right before his talks. Like... <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess. But like, I, I would rather have him tell me to buy gold and to like buy packets of food because we're all going to die than tell me I need to buy Crest because it gives me one cavity. And then <laughs> Good callback. Tell me with neurotoxins. Fluoride's a fucking neurotoxin, people. Oh, yeah. So let's put it in the school water, in the fountains. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. Like, forget the, the, no, the school water. What do you mean? Just put it in the water for the city. Put it, it in the city water. water. Yeah, yeah. Just dump it for the fish. Like, Give it to everybody. So gross. <laughs> it's so gross like, why they have to try to hijack consciousness that's my question why because it's too powerful consciousness? like what is the point it's because it mass con control to because to prevent people like you and i from waking up to our own power well too late <laughs> like it doesn't like, not like and guess what if you kill my container Guess what doesn't die? Yeah. Like, what is the, like, I still don't get it. I'm not scared. Yeah. I yeah. Don't it. Like, it's gone over my head. Like, as much as I'm very clear on what's going on, this temporal war of in fucking nonsense, like galactic bleeding into every fucking galaxy, like, you know. Like, yeah, the UFOs have been here like more than there are helicopters. There are probably more oh, yeah. UFOs in the sky than there are planes and helicopters. Like, oh, yeah. I think there's like a sheet of them. There's so many. Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we are just so like every science fiction movie you guys have ever seen. That's the truth. What they tell you is the truth is the big lie like and then they'll tell you, oh, but we told you because it was in the movies like these guys are so ridiculous <laughs> they're just ridiculous they telegraph everything they're doing they show you all about what they did do on the tv like the only thing they don't do for you is tell you that you have chakras that you're a creator that you are esp that you can time travel you can have out-of-body experiences and you can probably levitate they don't want you to know they don't that. want you to know that yeah no no no, no, no. No, no, no. Because then you can overrun them. <laughs> and that's well, the thing is, is we wouldn't overrun anything. No, yeah, that's not that it's consciousness. Not about... Right. So yeah. they're afraid of something that they are projecting. And this is like you're proje it's like you're doing in your mind this perverted thing. And then because you would do it, that's why you've now decided everybody else is going to do it too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that's like if you want to go back to blue pill that's psychology 101 you're projecting everything in your thing out on us mm -hmm. stop it stop so it. that we can fight about it and go about it and then thoughts become reality there what do you think about the infighting with the communities have you been seeing any of that on your end i see it on my end like, oh. that fighty stuff and there's yes, like, they forget who they are they just fall into ego and they're like that's when I stop watching them. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I asked a question, and I'm not going to say in whose room it was, but if my friend Linda Jeffries is watching this, she knows who I'm talking about. I asked a question, and it was, do you know, have you heard the term uh, Anu-Elohim? Oh. The guy starts answering the question, but then he starts getting all worked up and I'm going, Oh my God, how, how do I ask the question that works? Mr. Placid up. Like what started going off on how this concept is ego based and blah, blah. And it sounds like it's coming from, and I'm not going to mention the name he said it was coming from because then I would give up who both of them are, but mm -hmm. it was inter totally inter <coughs> community, mm -hmm. like which only serves the asshole, because now nobody knows who to listen to if one is bashing the other. Right. They kind of get them both out themselves out of the ring. Right. You guys when they could have been in it together and just had you know, people find them. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. watched Tyler Kiwala and his partner Aaron do a talk with um, Randy Kramer. Yeah. And they got into a discussion and Koala and Aaron kept asking a question and Randy was like, no, there is no one, whatever. It's a bunch of different factions and they're all, it's like the great race. Like 
sometimes, you know, Muttley and Dastardly, whatever his name are ahead. And then next time it's Penelope, whatever their, her name is. Like those cartoons that we had, it's like the race. Like, and mm -hmm. they're all vying. There's no one big anything. However, you know, the way each of them act with a few at the head of each of them. <sighs> you mean like of disclosure people? Like who's got the main? There's nobody oh, that's going to no, have no, all no, of it. It's more, it's more the bad people that are vying for control. It's like if you want to go like, let's say, let's say if you wanted to get political, like the Russians get ahead. And then no, then the U.S. gets ahead. Then no. Oh, then yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinese. It's like it's it's they're all I think, you know, like what would have happened? This is a good question. What would have happened had the government been honest with the people when Eisenhower made deals with aliens and um, when uh, Hitler was being um, influenced and, and given all kinds of uh, engineering information as to how to build saucers and anti-gravitic stuff? Like, you know, I can't say what would have happened if J.P. Morgan Chase hadn't said to Nikola Tesla, I can't make money off that. I'm back in Con Ed. Like, forget that. Like, what would have happened had they just told the truth about, like, forget the Cold War. Like, we've yeah, had yeah. agreements with these fucking, yeah. no, I shouldn't yeah. say. That. Some of them are fucking assholes. Some of them, you know, want to help humanity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I, benevolent bubble out there. It's like, it's not one big benevolent 3d here. Like they're good. They're, they're in the middle. Like, mm -hmm. but our light and our energy trumps everything. I think it's like the I dementors. Think, which is why it's such a hot commodity. Yeah. Which they, they suppress it and control it and harvest it and funnel it. And, and had we have learned all those stuff back in the day. Yeah. I don't even know what to say to that. Someone always used to ask me about the trials and tribulations that I've had. Would I ever do it all over again? I'm like, I think so. If I could get yeah, to this point where I'm at now. It. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'll say about the experience specific to my mom. Would I do it again? Fuck yeah. And I would try to find even more space to be even more compassionate, to be even less. Um, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Mm rockable mm -hmm. you know rocked mm -hmm. off my center by something someone said the way the landlords like you know because when you get in that space they want you in that's yeah. when they control you because then you start answering back incoherently and confusing issues and you can't zero in so yeah it's always yeah. Nice when, like i said before it's always nice when i see the hawk because to me it's like oh good you've zeroed in on something or you're about to where it was like a little bit staticky. So I, I just, I, 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 I don't know. You've always been very good at zeroing in. And I, I also love that. the, the, I guess you could just say the not giving a damn thing, but that's okay. just being yeah. confident, huh? Well, I could be like Frank and get canceled. <laughs> he got canceled. He was doing oh. an in-person thing and like he rented a place to do it where he does these talks or whatever. And it happened to be in Germany. And he was talking about transhumanism. He was talking about consciousness. He was talking about uh, all the things, AI. And when the woman who had him canceled, who loves uh, the idea that we can make fake CO2, why do we need real CO2? <laughs> she got a wind of what was going on and somehow got it canceled because of the topic. Oh. So it's Ooh. not YouTube. It's in Germany. You will shut the fuck up and you will be happy. You will have nothing and you will be happy. You will get a black box in your car. It will drive itself and you will be happy. Like, fuck you. It's not what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, well, Tyler Kiwala and Aaron were not necessarily agreeing with everything Randy was saying. Right. They do um, do their Randy own thing. Randy thanked them for being able to have a civil conversation. You know, I love them. They're I consider them friends. I think they have genuine hearts. And when you share the space with them, you just know they're just they're that platform. They just want everyone to talk. That anybody they they right. want to cheer everything to reach as many masses as possible. It doesn't mean they will subscribe to everything, but they've just been so humane and kind. I'm just I always so like, yeah. Way to be humane and kind when you yeah. That's where we're gonna get somewhere. 
<laughs> not this. <laughs> My peeps are better than your peeps. No, no, peeps are just peeping. Like, and that's what we do. We peep. And then we peep, we peep unconsciously until we start peeping consciously. Like, mm -hmm. that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and we find the others who are conscious We're as well. Peeping in the same resonation. Yeah. Whatever that just word I just made up. But yeah. <laughs> hallucinations i want to go back to that like hallucinations. Yeah. the way the way i articulated what was happening is that she was disintegrating from 3d and reintegrating into the field cool that's, that's the only power. way i can articulate it yeah you know um, at the beginning she definitely was like there was this bossy somebody who kept bossy very bossy and very just like, and I was like, well, who is this person? She's like, I don't know, but you're going to laugh at me. I said, no, I might laugh with you, like, but I won't laugh at you. I promise. What does this person look like? There's this silence. She looks at me and she says, an alligator. <gasps> I'm going, oh, oh fuck. She's talking to a freaking reptilian. Oh, they're peeking in. They're <laughs> what in the actual fuck is going on here now please thank you then another, like very long thin leathery skinned monosyllabic character that would wow. tell you bed go now rest like that but honestly i've and this is weird not not really I, I don't know why I keep saying it's weird because it really isn't. This is normal. Yeah. What's weird is not seeing these fucking things. And what is weird is that not everybody hallucinates all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and some don't want to share it. Yeah. At mm -hmm. will. At like, will. One of our, like we astral project, we do out of body experiences. We do all of that stuff all the time. But what we consider daydreaming, you're creating. That's your, you're, you're doing something like Leanne, 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 huh? What? Oh, sorry. I was, you were astral projecting. You projected yourself somewhere. Oh gosh. I do that all the time. <laughs> I like I lose chunks of time all the time. Right. What we do every day is actually all of these things that we're told, oh, you can't do that. That's just magic. Like we do it all, we do it day. all day. We just don't call it that. Yeah. And because we don't use the words that make it spooky action at a distance, that like the truth of ourselves is right under our own noses in our own daily behavior. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how deep the lie is. So fucked up. So fucked up. The power of our own hands. You know, speaking yeah. Of, yeah. I make a, right. I, there's a ball. There's a ball yeah. right there. I can feel it and it gets yeah. bigger and the heat doesn't go away as I, and then the goosebumps now all over my body are going like that because yeah. You're working with it because we're energy beings. Yeah, the body is the last fucking thing. Yeah, not the first. You know, you brought the hallucination. I remember my dad in the end. Um, I was with him probably like two weeks before his passing, but he was out here and he was hallucinating some things. But there were a couple that he would see a party, everyone in white, and there he sit in my backyard in the sunbeam and he just watched this white party yeah. go on, and no one was there but me and him. And I'm like, cool. So I'm like, my mom saw those guys. She kept saying she had to go to class, that they were waiting for her in class. I was like, what does class oh. look like? She said, there are lots of people there. I said, yeah. And I said, what does the teacher look like? She said, you're going to laugh. I said, no. Why do you keep thinking I'm going to laugh? Like, I would laugh more at some dumb human thing that you say. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was so rude. Um, dumb programmed thing that you would say as a human. There you go. Programmed. That's better. Sorry. There you go. Sorry, I don't mean to be insulting. I really no, I'm no, like, no, no. You're all her daughter. She's like the great yeah. unwashed. I'm like the great unwoke. Like, ugh. sorry. She'd laugh with you. She was here. You know, she, she is laughing. She, she is laughing. Like, yeah, well, she's, yeah. We like laughing, but there, um, she said they that the blonde hair looked fake. I said, "What does the skin look like? So white, it's translucent." I said, "Well, what kind of height? Very tall." I'm like, oh. Ooh. So she's in class with a bunch of, I guess, what would be considered tall white angelics. I don't know. And then she used right. to see this woman. She said, who's that? I'm like, who's who? She said, sitting in the chair with a bag. I said, oh, 
what's in the bag? She said, I don't know, but she's got a veil. I said, uh-huh. I said, can you see any of her skin? She said, yes. I said, what are you seeing? She said, long, like tubes. I said, her arms and legs are like long tubes? She said, yes. I said, what color? She said, kind of gray. I said, and the veil over the head, is the head like proportionately, she said, very big. Wow, some tall grays too. Beings in her room. Yeah. Yeah, like she was- My dad dad did that, he would swear. He goes, who the fuck is that? (laughs) And he'd be like, he's up and I'm like, I'm like, I don't see. And then I'm like, oh, maybe it's my uncle. I go, it's your brother. And he goes, no, it's not. Because he was like, that's ugly. Yeah, it's a fucking alligator guy. Well, but dude, I would talk back to these characters who were not cool. Alligator guy finally got sick of me and took off. (laughs) I'm like, I would say about six weeks before she croaked. I want to say this is in August. She died on the 27th of September. Like I put her to bed. So she's in bed and she's like laying down. And I'm like, are you okay? She said, yes. I'm fine. I said, are you comfortable? She said, yes. I said, good. And then she looks up at me and goes, I can offer you eternal life. Stop. Wait. So I like one, 1,000, two, 1,000. I go, listen, whoever's in there, (laughs) I'm already eternal. You can't offer me something I already have. So why don't you get the fuck out of her container now and give her some space? See ya. Like, wow, they're feasting. I'm like, what are you? Get out of here, you parasitic motherfuckers. Literally, mother suckers. Mother suckers. Fucking the life. Like, like, because when she gets agitated, they get happy. And oh, happy. yeah. Like, and Shoot. I'm watching this whole thing going on. Yeah. And, and the hardest thing for me to be like brutally honest was not to be like, mom, this fucking fear-based thing that you're carrying around, this is attracting this fuckery. Like you're going to croak and these assholes are going to be around you. Not, and they're going to be a layer between you and whatever. You need to drop the fucking shtick, man. You can't be like, ah! Yeah, that fear was pulling it all in, wasn't it? My God. And then and then I realized it's like every time you get pissed off at them, that gives them more food. I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so three years I've been in this space. This is why I don't talk to people. Like oh. I have some serious shit that nobody can see to work out. Like, you literally are combating. Your vibe is like literally trying to pull your mom. Having my own temporal yeah. voice. And I realized like, wow. wow. Wow, wow. She's born on November 7th, 11-7, and I'm born on July 11th, 7-11. She's fear-based. I'm not. Like this whole wow. fucking yin-yang thing that we are together. Did you, you said bloodline. You started off this whole thing talking bloodline. Did you find something when you went back? I forgot. Remember, I was checking our lives. I think I missed that. I had the last regression, and and I've been trying to find somebody because I guess, like, my left brain, my ego, my something, it's like something's telling me, you just, like, maybe I'm just like, I just want company, like, to verify and validate. But, like, I wish I could talk to Elena Denon. Like, that's who I feel could answer the questions properly. You know? Try to reach out. <laughs> well, like, so many people reach out. I know somebody who was in Orlando. These people all, like, it was worse than a convention of actors. Like, these people all have, like, you're. Yeah. Yeah, but I had a thing with that because I've worked conferences, the same kind of spiritual community conferences. And I worked the one with. Corey and Disclosure Fest. They asked my husband to be his guard and he was working. He's like, because he's six, seven beast. He's like, no, I'm good. Anyway, before and after the conference, they were in, they were just civilians doing things, no bodyguards. They were going to restaurants, doing stuff. Well, so, I think at that point that they were just being civilians, but within the conference, nobody could get close. Right. My right. Body like walked in behind Alex Collier mm-hmm. and she knew who it was right in front of her. So she said, Did you bring Merlin with you? And he kind of looked down and went, No, I don't you know so she got to but it wasn't you know wasn't that because i was texting him going look out for my friend dotty woodward and she said we can't get close to him and then in our rv and i think remote viewing is something that anybody 
with aptitude can learn really quickly. And even if you don't have what they consider to be aptitude, you can still learn because information is non-local. There you what go. you focus on collapses in front of you. This has been proven time and time again by all of our little scientists who refuse to take the next step into quantum mechanics. It's so annoying. <laughs> so fucking annoying. And who are you? You're a fucking actress. Yeah, but... I just know. I just know intrinsically. You guys are fucking stepping on your own dicks. Like, go. go. Yeah, they were here when people are like, well, you're just this or you're in the entertainment or whatever. I'm like, yeah, they're part of the light workers there. <laughs> like, we're everywhere. It's not who I am. Why are you defining me by what I do? Like, yeah. That's also annoying. The society has to define you. Well, what is it that you do? What sign are you? It's like, why does it matter? Are you resonating with my vibration? That's all that matters. Yeah. Are you, you good human? <laughs> Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Like, I don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you with chit chatting? I have about another 15 if you have. I'm, I'm whatever. You... Like, I, I make my own schedule. I'm one of those people who has somehow managed to, uh, <laughs> things that I used to get accused of. She refuses to get a job. Like, you know what? Go away. Uh, well, you're your mother. You've been raising yeah. children. Yeah. That's a woman in and of itself. What are you talking about? Like, pretty stellar children, too. So we'll have. I'm gonna have to attach some of Jack's um, links. She's yeah. she's finding her her heartbeat within the music industry. That's pretty cool. She's still very looking sexy. Like, <laughs> I love her look though. When she went full shave, I was just like, damn. It's yeah. like if anyone could pull that off, she's stunning. Thank you. So stunning. She is a very, very good thing. That's why the whole American Idol, their whole thing, when she was on the billboard jumping up and down going, stars are made here. That's why I made sure to take a picture with the thing behind me going, stars are made here. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, we just did a whole talk yesterday. Like, Yeah, on Raising Star Seeds about portal jump. We're, we're the portals. And our kids are our portal jump champs. Like, but, we're the portals. We did that. <laughs> right. But, you know... Like in their portals and their arrows. Yeah. We'll and it just them. keeps going and going and going. Right. Mm -hmm. But right. she's in love now. She's got some love. Gosh. Yeah. And she, Jack, is with Jezere. And Jezere is also a very bright light. His mom is in Nashville right now doing her second Joe Dispenza week intensive. I'm like, wait. Oh, wow. Stacia's doing it too now? Really? It's in the family. <laughs> it, is. it is. I mean, and you guys can look any of these people up if you're curious. Um, Stacia Ray Robitai, um, and and Jessare J E S S A R A E. They're all on Insta, and they do their little stories. They're very good at keeping up with their own Kardashian selves. They've got their own posse too. They're right, pretty I'm not as good. Yeah, the posse. Well, the posse mm -hmm. they have like Stacia has a posse. It's four dogs. <laughs> <laughs> dogs. It's four birds, and now Jack and Jazz just got a little pug. A little tiny mini pug name. Oh. He's so cute. And there's Oliver the cat, which I'm always trying to catnap Oliver and go, you know, you guys are young. You don't need these animals. You need to be free. And now Stacia's like, like going, oh my God. <laughs> they're like having their animals napped right and left. <laughs> we love our grandchildren. We'll treat them well. And you can be free, right? Go on vacation. Don't have to worry about it. <laughs> And you have the birds. I mean, how many birds do you have? Well, uh, combined in L.A., I don't know how many are left in L.A. I've lost count. My husband. You had one on set. I remember you You walked around with one on set. Oh, was that my little blinky? My I little think white and blue? Yeah, he somehow had a very not fun end. Like he, he my oldest one, the one that, <laughs> yeah, but she was such a bitch. <laughs> when I told her what happened. She said, oh, my God, Blinky hung itself. <laughs> like, oh, my God, you have a way of putting things. Oh, no. <laughs> Basically, Blinky hung himself. It was really sad. He was a blind bird. And somehow, like, there was a towel and there was a little bit of a shred. And he got it, like, I don't know, because he was blind. Oh. No, it was horrifying. It was actually horrifying. It was, it was very horrible. Oh, gosh. Like, we're not going to think about that now. But Blinky, Blinky was a beautiful bird. I loved him. I was able to bring him everywhere because he was blind. Like, and it was no trouble because he was this big. Like, he just stayed on you the whole time. Like, wherever. 
Yeah. Do you have, you don't have cats or dogs or anything? Just thought that you have the birds. Yes, I do. The, my, my 20 pound cat is now like six pounds and has heart disease. And my husband's like giving her stuff. You can see like my husband is now doing the nursing home thing uh, over on the other end with a dog and a cat. Dog gets sub Q fluids every day. She's a six pound Yorkshire Terrier who's got kidney issues. The cat has kidney and heart issues. So she's on some kind of like Lasix. I don't know. Like they're oh. just, but I also feel like, and I don't want to, it's hard to say this. Like every person in my family, I'm like literally the only person in my whole, whole family, both sides, every side who chose not to um, buy into anything. So I, I try not to think about that or struggle with that too much. Um, but I really, truly feel like the dog and the cat are around somebody uh, who's caring for them, who's still very much plugged into blue pill. I, I got to pay the bills. And what do you want me to do about it? And so what if everything you say is even true? What am I supposed to do? I still have to pay the bills, like still just stuck, stuck. And it's really hard. Uh, it's it's less hard having adapted um like, again, even when it's somebody you love, seemingly in your story of them, because this is my story of him, unable to get off the fucking merry-go-round long enough. And even if they're able to consider the idea that the narrative isn't good, so what? Oh, my God. Hmm. Does that mean if he were to one day tell me I'm done in LA, I want to come live with you? I would tell him no. I'm really glad it's a big apartment. Really? <laughs> you know, I mean, I have that, that's how much I, I love that I would in as much as, you know, the idea, like oh, here's the attractive move again. So, oh, you look strong and fit. But I am strong and fit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. No, I don't know. It's just that little... Oh, ego away, ego away. <laughs> I'm doing that with the haircut from hell. Well, it's growing out now. But this woman just went chop. And then I'm like, do I have short hair or do I have long hair? Like, I don't know what's happening. That's, that's I just let it go. Yes or no question you've turned that into with your haircut. <laughs> do we, we work with what we get. Look, I shaved my head so many times. You yeah. have, that's right. But it, how does it grow so mad? Like, my hair just doesn't grow. Yours is, like, already down here again. That's um, amazing. That's, like, within two. Supposedly grows a half a month, ha a half a month an inch. <laughs> I got you that. Figure it out. I got that one. <laughs> I grow a half a month every inch. <laughs> hey, that's, that's actually some serious SSP stuff. Like, we probably do grow a month for every. Right. Like, I don't, I don't say that any of it is fake. I have people that are like, I'm down with talking about consciousness, but when it comes to SSP, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm down about talking to SSP, but consciousness I can't deal with. Like, okay, why can't we just include all of it? Because I think if you include all of it, that's the answer. I think that's not the other. It's all of it. Well, that's the brain fuck for people. It's hard to wrap their head around the entire thing. Well, oh, oh. I will say this, like if, if they have developed, like among other things, a hard drive that's made of DNA, people like Billy Carson have been saying, now this is a year old, at least, if not more, four ounces, actually four ounces, one ounce of human DNA, whatever that is, like can hold a petabyte of information. Wow. Like, so I don't know as a civilian exactly what a petabyte is, but I know it's bigger than any fucking hard drive that's on sale at Staples. Yeah. A petabyte is basically enough room to hold all of the information in the whole universe and then some. Wow. We are wow. DNA. If our DNA is something that they are trying to make a hard drive, successfully have made hard drives from, then why would they be doing that if human DNA consciousness were not something that 
they cannot clamp. They're still temporal wars, dude. Fear, oh, yeah. parasite, anger, parasites suck off that shit, man. Parasites. And you literally off. have a visual of that with your mom. I did, and I do. Like, and then Mr. Parasite, I can give you a turn. Fuck off. That's crazy. Right. I talked back to so many entities that were in my mom's conduit. Wow. Like, I think there's a guy, I'm is it Rich Rich Martini? He's been on Beyond Belief. Like every time I watch a show, like if it's something that I am very fascinated by, I will reach out to whoever it was. Corey, good, actually, um, was very nice to me. He answered me right back on LinkedIn. I was oh, surprised. Cool. Emery Smith, not so much. At first, yes, but then, like, as soon as these people get managers, they go all Hollywood on you. It's like, oh, now there's a gatekeeper, and then blah, blah. It's like, okay, whatever. Like, yeah. yeah. there's Because there's, it's all energy. So when they get that energy back from mass, some people, it kind of, they short circuit. But like, you can't blame different. them, too, because it is yeah. it's very, it's very, like, it, it, your ego definitely feeds off of that kind of attention. Oh, I'm important. Oh, like, oh. Oh, oh, all probably created that way too. <laughs> right, right. I'm here to surpass that. Yeah, but that like, and it doesn't make me better than somebody that I'm past it. Like, I'm not ever saying that. Right, right. I'm not ever saying that, and I, I, I I'm horrified when um, people have called me on or interpret it as that, um, because that's never my intention. So, like. I don't want to be somebody who's like constantly watching everything they say because that's that's not being free. That's no. Not free. Filter, like, yeah. And if yeah. I hurt somebody inadvertently with my freedom and no filter, I'm happy to go revisit that and work it through, you know, but I'm not going to stop being me because somebody might get butt hurt and use what I say against themselves. Like, okay. Never. Don't ever, ever stop being you. You're super authentic. And that's what I love the most about you online. Your authenticity and keeping it real and genuine. That's what's missing in a lot of communities, I think. So the more we can cross that bridge and just be our more as more most authentic as we can. But you know, Heidi, I think people give themselves permission to do that. Like people are always looking for permission, like outside themselves. It's like the permission comes from inside too. You know, give yourself permission to be free. Give yourself permission to not step on your own thoughts. Like, you know, what if you're right? Even if it's you're thinking something that your parents and their grandparents don't subscribe to. What if they're wrong? Like, it's okay to have your own thoughts. It's okay to discern for yourself. It's okay to feel funny in a room with people that you've known your whole life who think a certain way and you don't think like that anymore. It's okay. It's okay. Give yourself permission because that's the only permission you'll ever fucking need. People, people, self-reliance, like nothing to be afraid of. I promise you. It's If, if you get through the fear of it to the other side of it, it's, it's, you're never going to want to go back. Like Eddie Murphy is like, once you drop black, you never go back. <laughs> say that to, <laughs> yes, in trading spaces or trading places. Oh, yeah. And I do that all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. Rolling yeah. around on his little whatever it was. And then, God. <laughs> that was a good one. Well, this might be the perfect little, we'll have to wrap it up a little bit now, but high vibe. And I think that's the most beautiful thing to say to peeps. <laughs> Well, I love peeps. I always have loved peeps. Like, How can I mean, the peeps find you? Should anybody come across this? I would say the, the best way to find me is to like leave a comment or like maybe find me on Insta, leave a comment on an Insta post or something. Um, um, Are you most active on Instagram more than Facebook? I'm most active in my own head. Like I can't <laughs> help it. Like I'm, hey, she's so active. Like she, I'm like Stuart. Yes, look what I can do. <laughs> my favorite guy. Right? I auditioned for Mad TV. I read for contract for Mad TV. Let me do it. <laughs> Let you do Stuart? Wait, what? I love Stuart. Oh, yeah, do it. <laughs> do look it. what I can do. Let me do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> 
Make me do it. <laughs> what happens uh, when you eat the taquito, Stuart? I don't want to say. Well, tell <laughs> man what happens when you eat the taquito. I don't want to say. <sighs> when you eat the taquito, it goes in like mud, but comes out like fire. And then your goo-goo falls off. Oh my God. Oh, they got away with a lot on there. <laughs> My goo goo. I don't have a goo goo, Stuart. <laughs> I get, oh my God, my goo goo fell off. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I must have eaten a taquito. No pot shots. <laughs> I'm wearing clothes. Well, may everyone find their inner Stuart and <laughs> that's what they can do. <laughs> Look what I can do. <laughs> We've all got it in there. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank and you. Find me. Like, I'm so happy to still be in touch with you and on this journey with you. Yes. Oh. Apart but together. 100%. We're lighting up the coasts. That's what I think. <laughs> like, well, let's play again the soon. Coast, keep in the middle of floating. Yeah, there we go. We'll have a chat. Um. Well, we'll see what we could do. With, I'd love to talk with star seeds, raising star seeds about Stein, the Steiner schools and yeah. just that kind of stuff. Being a child with knowing you're in this light, trying to communicate with people. Well, I, if I were a child, I would try to communicate with my higher aspects of myself and, and work the astral projecting and work all of the things that have not quite yet made it to mainstream so that when they do and people really freak out, you're there to help them. Like, I really feel like back back when I first started watching this stuff, it's like we need galactic social workers because if they actually finally figure out how to uh, turn themselves into particle and show themselves physically the way everybody seems to need them to do, people are going to freak the fuck out. Freak the fuck uh, out. Who are not freaked out need to be in service to help humanity and the species not fucking lose their minds which is why they're lying in the first place they think we can't handle it that's I it can we can what we can't handle is you fuckers controlling everything that's yeah can't handle. yes see. go schwab yourself klaus <laughs> you want a high vibe at least it was funny <laughs> and that's what it's all about open up that crown chakra baby yeah like you gotta laugh this shit off <laughs> Listen, well keep it real i know leanne you also have youtube channels because i know your light language is on there yeah i have the writing the frequency and i spell that f-r-e-a-k-w-e-n-c-y writing the freak frequency i have my facebook profile i have instagram i have like an email um if people want to reach out and ask me questions um if I can answer them, I'd be happy to. Like eventually, I think I want to try to do what you're doing, but like I, I need a one, two, three, four, five guy to get a calendar and guess. I, I, I we, I need, we need guys, Bobby. guys, girls. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but I have a bidet. No, yes, I do. I bet you, you probably do in that that. Beautiful I do. Place. My mom put bidets in the country house. She's super bougie, man. Super bougie. That bougie. Well, God bless your mom. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for sharing thanks. her journey with us. Um, uh, const you know, I was watching the journey unfold online. So I think that healed a lot of people as well, just seeing you interact with her a in that situation. People, like a lot more people than I realized were watching. And honestly, when I say that her death was the most beautiful, peaceful thing I've ever witnessed, um, I really feel like you know, I would say 10% of the 5,000 friends I have on Facebook were actively sending prayers for a peaceful transition. I asked for people to do that. I was very private about her ailments. And when things would go wrong, I really didn't like, that's when I got quiet and didn't videotape, you know? Um, but, but, but just, just suffice it to say that all of those electromagnetic signals coming through the field toward her with all of that love. I'm guaranteeing you this is what helped it be what it was. I'm sure without that, there would have been struggle. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. 
pretty sure just knowing who my mom is was so i just you know publicly again want to thank everybody who said even one kind thought it was received and it felt. was was received very wholeheartedly by um by the space you know and the people who happened to be in it at that time so thank you thank you so much Beautiful. thank you leanne for sharing your heart always <laughs> Love, love you, love you. Thanks, peeps, who came. Thank you. I'm so grateful we still know each other. I know.